speechless. Hello again to our fans on the shoreline. We've had a wonderful Boeing Air Show. There is still much to occur in the Boeing Air Show. Coming up later this afternoon will be the U.S. Navy Blue Angels. But right now, the Home Street Bank Cup, the APBA Gold Cup, the APBA H1 Unlimited National High Points Championship, it is all on the line. And it all comes down to this. A final field, six boats, John Walters, winner take all. So far this weekend, we've been running three boat or running four boat heats for three laps. We're going to put six boats out here, all on the front row. We're going to go five times around, and the winner claims the oldest active motorsports trophy in the world. Boy, I think it's going to be a barn burner for sure. And, you know, we, we saw how much action there is on the race course with four boats. It's a completely different character when we get six of them out there. And I'm lovingly referring to this as a defibrillator final. It's going to be a, a, a real amazing race. I'm sure there's going to be so many people um, that are, you know, banking on this, the last race of the season, the Gold Cup in Seattle. Uh, they're going to throw everything they've got at this. In poker terms, are, uh, every team here is going to be all in. We are 8 minutes and 50 seconds, 8.50 away from our start. Let's take a look at our national high point standings, and it is very, very close. Corey Peabody sits atop the list right now with 4,975 points. Right behind him, make that 91 points behind him, is teammate J. Michael Kelly with 4,884 points. Bottom line here on the national high points championship, John, if... Corey wins this final heat. He claims the Gold Cup and the National High Points Championship. If J. Michael Kelly wins this final heat, he claims the Gold Cup and the National High Points Trophy. And then there's all kinds of scenarios that go on after that. But it's between those two for our National High Points Championship. Let's take this moment right now because we want to run down the six boats that are going to run in our final heat for the APBA Gold Cup. We're going to start with the U1, the Miss Home Street and Dylan Runney. The U8, the Beacon Electric and J. Michael Kelly. The U9, the Beacon Plumbing and Corey Peabody. The U11, Legend Yacht Transport, presented by the old furniture cannery, Jamie Nielsen. The U40, the Flavor Pack, Dustin Eccles and the U91, the Goodman Real Estate, with Andrew Tate. That is our six-boat final field. Our alternate boat is the U60, the Beast Unleashed, presents Miss Thriftway and Gunner O'Farrell. And the way that's going to work, John, it's a little different than maybe it has in the past. Gunner's boat will be in the water, and if at any time prior to the two-minute mark, one of our boats has gone down or has not yet arrived on the race course. They will turn Gunner loose. After the two-minute mark, if all six boats are up and running, he is done at that point. So it'll be the home street, Dylan Runney, Beacon Electric, J. Michael Kelly, Beacon Plumbing, Corey Peabody, the Legend Yacht Transport, presented by the Old Cannery Furniture Warehouse, and Jamie Nielsen, the Flavor Pack, Dustin Eccles, and the Goodman Real Estate, Andrew Tate. We have had fabulous racing here this weekend, all weekend long. Can we keep it going? One more heat. We are one minute and 30 seconds to the five-minute mark, John. I think it's going to be worth the wait here. Everybody's, uh, you know, so excited for this. I think it's going to be an amazing heat. As you mentioned, there's so much at stake here. Um, the Beacon Electric with J. Michael Kelly and the Beacon Plumbing with Corey Peabody. There's 91 points difference between the two of them. There's another 91 out there that's real important, and that's the U91 of, of Andrew Tate. Uh, he's consistently had the fastest laps all day long here in both heats. So uh, even on the outside, he's got that thing hooked up and rolling. So it's going to 
to be uh, an amazing race. I think you're going to see a big race here during the five-minute gun as people are jockeying for position. You're going to see people cutting across the course from both sides. There's going to be pushing and shoving and maybe even trading some paint. But uh, uh, I think that, uh, it, it's, as I said before, hold on to your hats. This is going to be a boat race. It is going to be a boat race. If you've got a watch, a countdown watch, and you want to set it, get ready. We're 30 seconds away from the five-minute mark. Inside, 30 seconds to the five. I will give you a countdown from about five, six, or seven seconds. We're ready to go. It is the APBA Gold Cup, the oldest active motorsports trophy in the world. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mark, five minutes, five minutes to the start of our APBA Gold Cup final heat. It's the Home Street Bank Cup, the APBA Gold Cup at Seafair. The first boat away from the dock is going to be Jamie Nielsen. He's going to come out in the Legend Yacht Transport presented by the old Cannery Furniture Warehouse. Jamie Nielsen away from the dock. It is Chartreuse. It is Royal Blue. And he's going to have the rest of the field right behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, we are inside. Five minutes, we're at 4.30 until our final heat actually begins. Let's one more time. Take a look at the boats. It's the U1. It's powder blue and white. It's the Miss Home Street. It's driven by Dylan Runney. The bright red U8 Beacon Electric, driven by J. Michael Kelly. The U9, predominantly white with the blue lettering, the Beacon Plumbing, Corey Peabody. Then it's the aforementioned U11 Legend Yacht Transport, presented by the Old Cannery Furniture Warehouse and Jamie Nielsen. Then it's the blue and yellow, the Flavor Plat. Flavor Pack, excuse me, the U40 driven by Dustin Eccles, and then the white boat trimmed in black and gold, the Goodman Real Estate, the U91 driven by Andrew Tate. Our final heat is three minutes and 45 seconds away. Seafair reminds you that for your own safety and the safety of those around you, everyone must be out of the water when the hydros are on the Ted Jones race course. So now it's time to get out of the water and enjoy the world's fastest race boats, the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane. John Walters, I'm reading my copy. I'm not looking. What am I missing? Well, they came out of the pits. As you mentioned, Jamie was the first one out. He got to about the start-finish line on the back stretch there, cut across to the infield, and uh, came over to this side. Um... Dylan went just a little bit farther up the back straightaway and came across on this side. They're all kind of packed up together now with uh, uh, J. Michael Kelly on the inside. Um, it looks like uh, Dylan's cutting across the infield here, going to try to steal that inside lane from JMK. And we've got uh, Andrew on the uh, next lane in lane three or four, um, and then Corey out in lane five. It looks like Jamie's back in the back waiting, looking to find a, an open hole here. And Dustin Eccles following up behind everybody, looking for that opening with all that top end. He wants to get to the first turn first. I was kind of uh, surprised there. It looked like J. Michael Kelly definitely left room for Dylan Runney coming across the race course to get on that inside lane. So with 2.35 until our start up the backstretch, it is Dylan Runney sitting on an inside lane. He now moves a little bit to the outside. Looks like the field's going to move outside with him. It's J. Michael Kelly in two. But then I talk about the fact that maybe Kelly let Runny on that inside lane. But you've been saying all along, you think Lake Toon is lane two is the place to be. Maybe he let him in. Maybe he wants to. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the guys here will tell you that lane two is the fastest lane. Uh, you can come strolling down here, get to the uh, entrance pin, and, and just turn the boat in lane two. Lane one um, is a little bit tighter. It's harder to run right on the buoy line and if somebody's in lane two can pinch you you have no place to move on the inside you either go inside the race course or hit a buoy so uh, lane two is really the preferable lane well and at the top end of the race course dylan runny went way wide and j michael kelly actually moved to the inside but now it appears runny has tightened it up a little bit and jmk has let him go in there and kelly has moved back to the outside in lane number two andrew tate finds himself right now sitting in lane number three then it is the beacon plumbing Corey peabody in four jamie nielsen in five dustin eccles is on the far outside i like where they are although maybe kelly and runny might be a little bit early john walters you want to be at that apex at the one minute mark we're not yet to 110 although we're there now yeah, you sure do, and and uh, Dylan's re working real hard to try to get the inside lane here. And I, you know, the way they've run this weekend, I think they need the inside lane to be competitive here. Uh, J. Michael Kelly.
Kelly has got enough boat speed, uh, enough experience that I think he can get a little deeper run at it, and, and he can win from lane two. Uh, but the, the one I think you really need to keep your eye on there is in lane number three, and that's Andrew Tate. Uh, Andrew's boat is accelerating extremely well. Um, he's able to fly that thing into the wind here better than um, than than most people would give you even credit that, that is even possible to do. And, uh, you know, he's been managed to not only fly the boat, but keep his foot on the throttle at the same time and not really give up, you know, any speed there. Where the other boats have gotten badly out of shape, they've had to back off the throttle and they lose a lot of time there. I think we got a couple of boats up there early, and certainly Dylan Runney is one of them. I think Kelly might be a little bit early. We're at 20 seconds right now, and they're already coming off the top end of the race course. I think Runney's going to have that inside lane, but he may have overpaid for it. Then it's going to be Kelly in two, going to be Tate in three, Peabody in four. It's going to be Eccles on the outside. Nielsen's going to be in five. We are five, four, three, two, one. Mark and Andrew Tate did not break the clock. Dylan Runney did, but it was Tate with the boat speed from lane number three or four. And then on the outside, it was Dustin Eccles, who's going to turn left first, come out of there. It is Andrew Tate. He comes off the corner first, but he's got J. Michael Kelly right with him. Kelly hooked just a little bit as he got to the exit pin of the corner. And Andrew Tate was able to open up a little bit on him. Now Kelly's got the boat straightened back up. And here comes J. Michael Kelly, the start is legal. They are really rolling hard. Somewhere in that mess, and it's back in about fourth place, is Corey Peabody to the exit pin at the top end of the race course. On the outside, coming from lane number three, it is Andrew Tate in the 91, the Goodman Real Estate. Look at the flavor pack on the outside with Dustin Eccles as he flies it across start finish line. Remember, fans, we go five times around. Corey Peabody is definitely back as Dustin Eccles flew the flavor pack as they got down to the lower end of the race course. Oh, have we got one hooking up here? Good. It is Andrew Tate on the outside. He's got about three boat lengths on J. Michael Kelly. This is turning into a very good two-boat run, John Walters. But right now, Andrew Tate starting to open up a little bit of water on J. Michael Kelly. Andrew's really in the perfect spot position here. He's got room on the outside to drift out a little bit if he needs to. He's really trying to hold that number two lane and not give J. Michael Kelly any more room than he absolutely has to there. They come off the exit pin pretty close because J. Michael had a shorter distance, but uh, you know Andrew's got top end on him here, and he tends to you know pull away a little bit more. He's in perfect shape. The boat is worn run, but, but J. Michael Kelly's pulling real hard on the inside there. They're going to be side by side when they get to the entrance pin. Yeah, they're down at the entrance pin of the corner right now. We start lap number three and they are literally dead even they are dead even now it's kelly that you see first coming off the exit pin right with him is andrew tate j michael kelly comes off the pin you can see tate he's right on the outside we expected a barn burner this is a beauty we've got a great race running for second place dustin eccles in the flavor pack is on the outside of Corey peabody in the u9 to beacon plumbing but the race is out front and kelly just opened up some water on tate not much but he's got about two or three boat lengths Exit pin off the top end of the race course. The Gold Cup is on the line. The National High Points Championship is on the line. And Kelly has opened up a little bit of water. They'll put three in the books with two more to go. It is J. Michael Kelly and the Beacon Electric Johnny's opened up water. He has, and then Andrew's really fighting with the wind at this point in time. He's really trying to work hard to keep that boat settled down. In the meantime, you know, J. Michael is, is out front and pushing hard. He's actually stretching the lead a little bit. He's picking up a little bit of room every stretch away here. Uh, they kind of hold even with each other going through the turns, but uh, the, with all that water in the air, it's hard to see you know, exactly what, what's going on with Andrew over there, but he's losing ground. He is losing a little bit of ground now to the top end of the race course. The race for third place has kind of been settled. It is now Corey Peabody in third position, but our race is at the top end of the race course. J. Michael Kelly will come down at complete lap number four. He'll get a white flag with one to go, and he is opening water still on Andrew Taylor. He's got more than a rooster tail. J. Michael Kelly, this could be the race of his career. He's won a gold cup before. He has never won the Drivers National High Points Championship. Take that back. He's never won the team and the drivers at the same time. He would get them both right here if he can hold on for three quarters of a lap. Up the back stretch, J. Michael Kelly off the turn. Got a full rooster tail on Andrew Tate. Third place goes to teammate Corey Peabody driving a beacon plumbing. And then it is back to the flavor pack. And then Dylan Rennie 
Bonnie in the home street. Top end of the race course. John Walters, I'm going to bring him through the top end and bring him down. The checkered flag is hanging. J. Michael Kelly, this could be the biggest day of his career. He is off the turn. He can see the finish line. He picks up the front end, flies it a little bit. This is all his if he can finish it. Checkered flag, your Gold Cup winner, J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Electric. Second place to Andrew Tate in the Goodman Real Estate, the U91, then it is Corey Peabody. You hear the fans clapping here behind us on the tower. I think that is a popular win. J. Michael Kelly, holy cow, fourth place is gonna go to Dustin Eccles in the U40, the flavor pack. Here come Dylan Runney. He will come down in the U1, the Miss Home Street. We expected a good one, we got it. Oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five started, or six started, five have finished. Here comes Jamie Nielsen in the U11, the Legend Yacht Transport presented by the old Cannery Furniture Warehouse. My, oh my. John Walters, that was fun. <laughs> Can we do this again? Yeah, that was an amazing race. And <sighs> and uh, you know, I, I think you just saw Jay Michael have to have the better boat ride as the yep. the water got rougher, the wind came up. Um, you know, he was just able to, to run it at any lane that he wanted to. The boat was completely under control. It was really fast. And when they got in the rough stuff, uh, J. Michael Kelly was able to just open up a little bit of ground. And, and uh, once he got out in front, he just never looked back. John, we've always said, or I have always said as an announcer, you can have all of the power in the world, but if you don't have a good boat ride and can't use it, it just doesn't do you any good. And to your point, J. Michael Kelly, I think, had a better boat ride than Andrew Tate did. That doesn't mean Andrew was going to make it easy. Man, he hung right with him there. That was good deck to deck boat racing for the oldest active motorsports trophy in the world. The National High Points Championship was on the line. We got to caution everybody here a little bit. The results are unofficial. Those are the results on the water. The boats have to go through tech inspection, which they will do. Yeah, we've been lucky so far today, or the guys have just been that good that we haven't really had any technical disqualifications or any technical rule issues at all. Uh, I hope that that is indeed the, uh, you know, continues here in the final heat. But a whale of a boat race. Man, you saw some outstanding driving. You saw some outstanding preparation. Um, these guys are professionals, and this is the best boat racing can ever be. We are watching on the monitor here. J. Michael Kelly has just pulled the U8, the Beacon Electric, back to the dock. Watch him. He is just now climbing out of the cockpit there. He's still maybe 100 feet off. And he is going to get up on the air scoop. Here goes J. Michael Kelly. Going to put the fist up in the air. Oh, man, what a moment for this kid. No. Uh, the question was, is this his first Gold Cup? No, he has won a Gold Cup before, but this time, if everything stands, he will claim a driver and a team national high points championship, which is the first time he will have won both, and he will etch his name for the second time on the oldest active motorsports trophy in the world. Wow. A big day for JMK. And honestly, John, we talk about tech inspection and all that. I really do hope it stands. I, let's decide this out there on the water. I totally agree. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really hope that that is indeed the case. These guys have been really good all day long. There haven't been a lot of, you know, problems or uh, that. The temperature has been, you know, pretty consistent all day long. And I think that, uh, you know, we'll get the stuff through um, the uh, – uh, a tech inspection here, uh, get them back on the trailer, and everything's going to be okay. And there's the first crew member on board the U-8 as Mike finally got back to the dock. And as you might expect, a lot of hugs and handshakes. And, of course, <laughs> the hug and the kiss from the wife is always the most important. And he can check that box. Angela right there, always to meet her husband, J. Michael Kelly, win, lose, or draw. Angela is always there. They are quite the couple. He'll make a great champion. He has before he will again. Absolutely. And, you know, there was a uh, – it looked to me like, you know, in, in the last – 
in the first turn here, exiting the first turn between the apex and, and uh, the exit of the first turn here in lap five, um, they got really close together there. And I don't know if Andrew got wet right there, uh, and maybe that's why he had to backpedal or or it uh, you know caused him a, a little bit of hesitation coming off the turn. But that's when JMK really opened up the distance in that last lap and just kind of drove away from Andrew going down the back straightaway. So um, we'll see if there's any kind of a call or any kind of an issue there. It looks like they're they're talking about it now. And they will talk about it. It's a it's a big prize. It's worth talking about. But as I said earlier, and just from a fan's perspective, A, it was a great show. B, I hope it all stands as we saw it out here in the water. Let's decide it out there. Yeah, I totally And agree. then uh, everybody can shake hands and congratulate once we're on shore and in the pit area. It's the 2023 Home Street Bank Cup and APBA Gold Cup at Seafair. On the water, the big prize goes to J. Michael Kelly, the Beacon Electric. And how about this part of the story with Bill Cahill? Bill Cahill comes to Seafair. He says, what do we have to do to get the Gold Cup back in Seattle? It's been 38 years since we had it here. And as Dave Herensberger said one time with regards to the race in Coeur d'Alene, I want to help bring that race here, and I want to bring my boats here, and I want to win it. Right now, it looks like maybe that has happened. This is a big day for JMK, but a big day for Beacon Plumbing and Bill Cahill, and we all owe him a big thank you. We do. Bill Cahill has been... Um a real leader in this sport and he's you know campaigned really hard to, to bring keep continue to keep racing in Seattle to continue to bring the gold cup here and and uh, it was his effort this year that, that made the difference bringing the gold cup here to Seattle and and uh, everybody owes you know him and everybody involved you know a, a great deal of of uh, you know credit for that sort of thing I mean obviously everybody at Seafair all the volunteers everybody that works so hard to put this race on every year and make this a big part of you know Seattle history tradition and all um, it's a wonderful thing and a lot of people know Seattle because they come here for Seafair uh, same way with you know a, a lot of these teams that are from you know the local area here this is um, this is you know the capital the boat racing capital of the world is Seattle Washington and, and uh, you know it's named after you know great people in our sport Ted Jones race course here um, there's you know the, the, the pit area the, the beauty of, of the surrounding area uh, the homes Mount Rainier when it's down in Mount Baker at the other end and uh, just beautiful lake and beautiful people and just a wonderful place to spend the first weekend in August every year. There seemed to be a theme to the 2023 H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing Series. That theme would be strong racing. They won in Guntersville. They won in Madison. They won in the Tri-Cities. They won here. They just keep winning. They just keep winning. Yeah. Terrell Strong's made a, a, a real strong commitment to the sport, to his team, um, to everybody involved. And, you know, he gives them the tools. He gives them the wherewithal to, you know, make these boats competitive and to continue to, uh, you know, be better every weekend. So uh, it, it, this sport will survive because of people like Terrell Strong. So still a lot of congratulatory hugs and fist bumps going on down there on the end of that dock. Mike is clearly one very happy guy, as he should be. He's going to be a little bit nervous, I'm sure, until the word comes out of the tech truck of that you're clean and everything is good. So we're going to assume at this point, that's all we can do, is assume that the official results will be as we just saw them on the water. Right. John, at this point, and before you and I sign off, because we're going to go to an air show here um, at some point, but before we get done talking, I want to make sure I have time to make sure we get just kind of your feelings on the whole weekend, what we just saw. We saw amazing qualifying, tremendous racing, and we saw great racing in our final heat. Kind of give me some thoughts that you have looking back on everything you and I witnessed. You know, I think that myself and, and everybody here uh, saw an outstanding boat race. Uh, it went smoothly, it went quickly. Um, you know, everything was in place, everything was in order. There were no delays, there were no pauses, there were no, um, everything stayed pretty much right on schedule. As far as the boat racing itself, you have seen eight of the best prepared, fastest race boats 
the world has ever seen. Um, a good group of drivers here. Um, I think the sport is, is very much on an uptick right now. We've got new sponsors. We've got so many young people uh, involved in the in the sport right now. Uh, young people working on the boats and, and young people working for H1 and here on the, on the beach. The technology, uh, the, the, the pictures that you saw, uh, the coverage that you got, um, you know, the calls are made faster. Everything you can see is, is very much with, you know, transparency and honesty. And um, I, th I think you saw an excellent boat race on every level. Uh, from the fans' point of view, uh, everybody was well-behaved and, and, you know, interested in the boat race and here for all the right reasons. Uh, the weather participated all weekend long. Uh, the boats were fast from the very beginning. Um, I can only think of one time that we saw a boat come back on a rope. Um, so uh, they they were consistent, they were fast, they were good, they were competitive. I think the drivers are all um, you know very much safety oriented and and looking out for each other and themselves. Um, I you know I just have nothing but good things to say about this 113th running of the APBA Gold Cup in Seattle, Washington. Way to go, everyone! That is very very well said, and I, I appreciate you doing it. You were talking about the sport being on an uptick. You talk about some of the young people here with NH1. These guys right down here to our right that make up the H1 Unlimited live stream team. I'm part of that group. If I would retire, the average age in that group would drop by about 25 years. <laughs> I'm having a major impact on the, the height of that average age. But there is so much talent in that group. And you talked about the shots they've been seeing this year, the drone shots, the camera angles. That's H1 investing in the live stream. They realize the importance of that. But I also want to talk about not just the new sponsors at all and some of that, but some of these new drivers like that one right down there on the dock wearing the red and black shirt that bobby king we've got guys like him floating around now yeah. that are going to become the stars of this sport down the road the next generation is starting to show itself and these kids are awesome they are they're absolutely awesome and when you're talking about kids some of these kids that are here driving these boats have have their own kids that are driving the j stock hydros down there that are you know put on the water by them and their parents and their sponsors and the hydroplane and race boat museum and you know just boat racing in general is, is just a real family oriented you know fun time sport and, and and a really good thing and um i'm just proud to be able to say that i've been part of it john the u8 the beacon electric has cleared tech inspection. How about that? How about that? How about that? J. Michael Kelly is, and we are not aware of any calls on the water. We will still allow for a little bit of wiggle room there. But as far as the tech truck, that is in the rear view mirror. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I want to look back just on the weekend and a couple of comments. First of all, John, working with you, it has been a pleasure. I'm going to try and sign you to a contract tonight before we get out of here and get you back and do this again. This, what, Kemp, what do you think? Should we bring him back? Last year, we threw Corey Peabody off of here because we wanted to see him back in a boat <laughs> back out again. on the race course where he belongs, yeah. <laughs> back exactly yeah. where he belongs. But I think we're going to try and ink you to a contract. It was a pleasure. I learned a lot. You're very professional at how you go about this. You're very articulate. You certainly know exactly what you're talking about. I think you were a great addition to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure to be part of this and a real honor to, to get the opportunity to, to talk about the sport and the people that, that I love here. Um, I you know felt a little rusty at times. I kind of tripped over my own tongue a couple of times and, and uh, uh, you know got ahead of myself. But that uh, you know I, I hope that you know if I get the opportunity to do it again that uh, you know as everything else practice makes perfect. And I don't ever expect to be perfect, but I'd like to be pretty darn good. It it is hard. These boats go awfully fast, they and do. it's very easy to get stumbling over your own tongue. I'm not sure J. Michael Kelly has yet come to grips with what exactly has happened down there. He's, he's rubbing his eyes. I think he's got a couple of tears in his eyes. About 30 seconds ago, he got a hug and a smooch from Vanessa Strong that would be uh, half of the team ownership group of Daryl and Vanessa. <laughs> Clearly, Angela's got tears in her eyes. She's yeah, happy down there. Awesome. What a moment for hydroplane racing. What a moment for Seafair in Seattle. This is just absolutely terrific. So again, 
Thank you, John. Kim Meredith, this does not happen without you. And you and I had a conversation yesterday. I don't want that silly email where you ask if you can join me and help me again on the broadcast. I'm never doing it without you. And Tate Meyer's right here. He just heard me say it, so he'll hold my feet to the fire. That's what we're going to do. My job is so easy when I get to stand up here and work with the likes of the two of you. This has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. It has as far as the racing and all of that, we promised good deck-to-deck side-by-side racing. We did not Came disappoint. Yeah. Boy, you were talking about a knockout punch, and the next thing you know, we darn near had a photo finish here between, between a couple of guys. It was great racing. And at this point, having said goodbye and thanked all our people, we are going to step away from the microphone, send it down to Mark Christopher. We had a great final. Can you top it? You're up with the air show, my friend. Take it. that have been watching and listening on the H1 Unlimited YouTube channel. You're still looking at the screen. And the most popular guy in the entire state of Washington right now has an eight on the back of his driver's suit. And his name is J. Michael Kelly. I hope you have enjoyed our broadcast as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. On behalf of Brad Luce, John Walters, Kim Meredith, I'm going to basically sign off from us talking, but I'm not doing it until I talk about the group down here on my right. The H1 Unlimited live stream team is absolutely the best team on the planet. I am much older than all these guys and gals that are involved. They let me be a part of what they do, and what they did this year is nothing short of amazing. If you have enjoyed watching the live stream and the drone shots and the close-up views and the interviews and everything that the H1 Unlimited live stream team tried to do to make it better. And I'm just going to say this online to everybody. Let us know. Let that live stream team know because there is so much talent down there. They are absolutely the best. And I point to the guys at the right, but there's a bunch of them upstairs. We have to include Nick Kish and all that at some point or he'll get mad at us. But Jared Meyer down there running around the pit area with cameras. We got Matt Johnson here. We got Tate Meyer. We got Jared Meyer. We got Nick Kish. And we've even got a few others that aren't really part of the live stream team, but we let them get on the phone with us every Sunday night and we hash out the problems. I've gone too long. The H1 live stream team rocks. I hope you enjoyed our season. I hope you enjoyed our series. Please do me personally one favor. Come back next year. Bring a friend. Let's do it again. For H1 Unlimited at the APBA Gold Cup in Seattle, this is Brad Lou saying so long. We'll do it again next year.